Hello friends, fellow Shutterbugs. Welcome to another episode of Beer Geek Photography. Hope everyone's having a great year. I thought I'd start off 2016 with a what's in my bag sort of video. I uh, also wanted to mix this up with a bag review of a bag I've had for a little over a year now. Uh, really enjoyed it. This is the kind of bag I take with me when I want to take a lot of gear. I took this with me on a shoot to do a uh, shoot of a 1966 Ford Mustang convertible recently. Uh, sort of a commercial kind of shoot for some sales photos, try to get it sold. Brought a lot of gear with me and thought I would show you what was in my bag when I did that shoot and talk about the bag itself and show you what kind of gear is in my bag when I take a lot with me. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the bag I wanna talk about today is the Crumpler $6 million home bag. It is a shoulder style bag from Crumpler. I believe they're out of Australia. They make some really good bags. I, this is my first Crumpler bag. I did a lot of reviews beforehand, watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I think Crumpler makes a great bag. I've been really happy with this. As I said, I had this bag for a little over a year now. It's been a great bag. It's a the, the bag I take with me when I want to take a lot of gear. Uh, so it has a really nice heavy strap on it, a uh, nice shoulder pad with a rubberized grip on here. It really stays on your shoulder really nicely. The one thing that drove me to this bag is the color, of course. I love purple. Anything purple, it's going to sell to me. So pick this one up recently, or pick this one up a little over a year ago, as I said, just based on the color and the reviews I saw of the bag. So let's go ahead and get into this. This is a $6 million home. As I said, it does have a nice carrying handle on top. Um, some loops here if you wanted to tie on a tripod or something on the top. So those are nice. I've actually tried tied on a tripod before on the past on the top on this. On the back of the bag, you do get a sm small area for maybe like a, a small tablet, a notepad, Something like that, just quick access, something you want to get to easily, uh, it can go in there. On the sides of the bag, it has some, some nice nylon loops on it, so you can attach a, uh, a smaller little point-and-shoot camera bag if you wanted to, or slide a leg of a tripod through here if you wanted to. Uh, a lot of different options there, clip on something, who knows, who knows what you might want to do. Um, as I said, it's on both sides of the bag. Really durable bag, does really well in wet environments. I saw a video from Digital Rev where they actually put this into a fountain and had water going all over it and it didn't get wet inside, so that was really nice. This features two different styles of closure on the front of the flap. Um, you have these plastic clips here, which are nice to sort of hold the, hold the front flap closed. Uh, as well as a Velcro area here and here if you wanted to use the Velcro. Uh, and also features a silencer here so you can put that over the Velcro. And then if you're in an area where you don't want to have the Velcro constantly ripping open and closed, uh, you can just you know gently close it like that. It stays closed pretty well. So let's move on to the inside of the Crumpler $6 million home. As you can see, I got quite a bit of stuff packed into here. We're just gonna go ahead and work our way through this bag. It does have an orange, nice soft interior, uh, very gentle and it works pretty well. So the first thing I'm going to pull out of here is my main camera and that is the Canon 70D. I have the 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle lens on here right now. This is a, a recent acquisition of mine. Uh, with the lens hood on it. I'm uh, really enjoying shooting with this wide angle lens. Uh, really fun to be able to get a super wide angle. Definitely opens up a lot more options when it comes to uh, taking pictures. Uh, of course the 70D is a new acquisition of mine as well. I did a recent video on it. Great camera, great upgrade from the T4i that I had before. Uh, really loving this camera a lot. And then I do have the uh, knee were battery grip on here as well recently just picked that up uh, as a Christmas present kind of thing just like to be able to have the portrait shooting available to me portrait composition shooting so I really like to have a battery grip on all my cameras that have that option it's a really handy thing to have plus put two batteries in here so you have twice as many 
uh, twice as much battery power, uh, really nice. You can shoot all day long, probably shoot for two days with this battery because the, the, the 70D battery is so much larger than the T4i I had before. That is my camera battery grip and the lens I shot with. When I was shooting the Mustang, I mainly used the 50 millimeter lens. We'll go ahead and pull that out now here. This is the Canon 50 millimeter STM lens 1.8. And I do have the lens hood for that as well. I like lens hoods for all my lenses if they're available. A great lens, you know, you, everybody says you gotta have a 50 millimeter and I agree, it's a, it's definitely a, a great lens to have. A little bit tight on a crop sensor body like the 70D, but still great for portraiture. And with when I was shooting the car, I was able to back up far enough to where I could uh, make use of this lens and it is a very sharp lens for the money uh, once you stop down to 2.8 or further very sharp lens and you know you can catch this on sale for $110 for the lens much higher quality of build versus the 50 millimeter uh, f1.8 mark ii that i had previously uh, this one was just released in 2015 the new stm version of the lens and i Recommend that people get this STM version over the previous Mark II model that had the very loud motor and the build quality wasn't there. This lens has a very solid build quality to it. It feels just like a quality product. Next thing I have down in here, I'll kind of show you how this works. These they have these two big dividers here with flaps on top here, which are really nice. Uh, then I got, uh, I'll go ahead and pull this out. This is my film body. This is a Canon EOS Elan 7NE. This is one of the last film SLRs that Canon made. It's sort of a prosumer kind of level of SLR. Uh, it's, it's kind of along the same lines as the 70D. It's, and it's, it's, it's above the Rebel line. It, has a, it adds a lot more features that the Rebel cameras don't have. Uh, and this is a really great camera for if you wanna just shoot film put all your Canon EF lenses on here. As I said, I love battery grips, so this has the battery grip on it as well. I have some slide film loaded in here right now. This is just a great camera if you wanna explore film. I can pick up, pick up this, this body for under $100. And as I said, mount all your Canon EF glass to it. It all works, including this brand new 50 millimeter lens that was just released last year. Works just fine on here. Uh, and a really nice camera to shoot with, and it's it's very familiar to anyone who's used a Canon DSLR. Uh, great way to jump into the film world if you already have some Canon lenses to go with that. Uh, and I'm gonna have links to all these products in the show notes below uh, if you wanna check any of these out further, including the bag itself. I'll have links to that as well. Got just a couple extra uh, LPE6 batteries here. Uh, got those when I got the battery grip and I have an extra battery. So I have plenty of batteries now. Shouldn't have any problem with batteries. The next thing I have here is a flash. This is the Niewer TT560 flash. This is a fully manual flash. Uh, just has a plus and minus button to adjust the flash output. Uh, it does not zoom, but you see the flash head does articulate and as well as uh, rotate side to side, so if you want to sort of bounce this off a, bounce this off a wall or bounce this off a ceiling, uh, it'll do that. It does have a slave mode as well if you want this to just automatically fire with another flash. I usually use this with wireless triggers, and it works great. It's a fully manual flash, but it comes in at around $30, $35, so it's, it's a really nice flash to have, and it gets the job done if you're willing to do some manual control of adjusting the output. Uh, just a matter of taking a shot, looking at looking at the back of your camera, deciding whether you want more flash, less flash. So that's really nice, a really nice way to get into flash photography for not a lot of money. Next thing I have here, favorite lens of mine. This is the Tamron 7300 SPDIVC. Lots and lots of acronyms with this one. Uh, but just a great telephoto lens, has a vibration reduction, whatever you want to call it, anti-shake <laughs> kind of image stabilizer kind of abilities. A really nice contrast with this, an f4 to f5.6, so it's not super fast, 
Uh, but if you're out in the daytime and you want to shoot some sports or wildlife, this is a great lens to have. Um, I've added on a collar mount here to be able to mount this onto a uh, monopod. I was uh, doing a drifting event, racing event recently, and used this. Uh, slides on and off. That's really handy, uh, really handy option for this lens. The lens does come with the hood, and it's a great value for the money on this lens. Uh, I've got this, managed to get this on a discount sale they were having for $100 off, so it made it around $350 for the lens. I like this lens a lot better than the Canon version of the 70 to 300. I think it's a better lens, better quality. Uh, really nice pictures come out of this lens, and uh, I do like this one quite a bit. So. The Tamron 70 to 300 is highly recommended from me, and so that is in my bag. So that pretty much does it for the main compartment of the bag. I'll kind of show you uh, what this looks like on the inside, the different dividers that come with the uh, $6 million home from Crumpler. As I said, you got these two bigger dividers here in the middle with the flaps that can go either way. I sort of tend to fold them out over top of things that are on either side. Uh, and then you got two smaller dividers here that can sort of divide up these other areas. And it's just a really nice, really well-constructed bag. Haven't had any problems with it at all. Last but not least, we have a, a front compartment here. So that just snaps open and I got a few items in here I'd like to talk about and show you. Got a sort of a, just an open pocketed area here in the bottom, as well as some, some uh, sort of mesh pockets here with some elastic on them. First thing I'll pull out here is a DGK Color Tools card set. Uh, got a black card, a gray card, and a white card. I mainly use the white card for white balance and the gray card for checking exposure to make sure that's right. This is a real handy uh, thing that you can just put around your neck and just have it with you at all times and anytime you're in a new situation you want to check things out, uh, it's an easy way to Easy way to do that. So really handy tool, under $20, probably under $10 for this. I don't remember exactly. As I said, it'll be in the, it'll be in the show notes below. Uh, that's a really cheap item on Amazon that you can pick up. Next thing I got here is a memory card holder. It's a Vanguard brand uh, SD card holder. Hold six SD cards and they can be put in here upside down. So typically when I fill up an SD card and I put it back in here, it's put in upside down so I know it's full. Empty SD cards go in right side up. Three, three SD cards on each side. It's always handy to have extra ones of those even if you think you might not need them. If you have a faulty SD card, it's nice to have some extras just in case. I uh, got here a lens pen. These are really handy for cleaning off lenses and filters and anything else that might get smudged up. That's just a really tiny version of the lens pen. I typically bring that for my point and shoot cameras that have really small lenses on them. That works really well for those. Here is a lens pen Smart Clear. They make this for cleaning smartphones and, and whatnot and the back screen of your camera. If that gets smudged up, that works really well for that. And then just a microfiber cleaning cloth just for cleaning off smudges and cleaning, just you always you can never have enough cleaning items I find. So it's nice to be able to do that. And then as well, I bring some alcohol pre-moistened pre wipes for really dirty stuff. If something happens to get on the lens or whatnot, uh, you can definitely have that to clear those off. Um, so that is the Crumpler $6 million home. I'll go ahead and put this Velcro silencer back in here, put that up. So it's a really nice bag, fits really well. Typically just wear this over my shoulder and it's easy to pick up and open up and grab stuff out of here. Really nice camera bag, really enjoyed it. Uh, as I said, all these items you see here, plus the bag itself will be linked in the show notes below if you wanna check any of these things out. Thanks for watching this what's in my bag slash camera bag review of the Crumpler $6 million home. Really like this bag a lot. It's, it's really been durable. As I said, it still looks brand new. I've, I've used this quite a bit over the past year and year and a half or so. It holds a lot of gear. It's really comfortable. It's really stylish. I like the colors on it. Thanks for watching this episode of Beer Geek Photography. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Happy shooting. Cheers.